Hi everybody, welcome back. It's a bit of a chilly one this morning, but the uh, sun is out and there's not a cloud in the sky, so it's a bright, sunny, and at least it's dry today. Back up here at the dealership looking at second-hand caravans, and today we've set ourselves the goal of finding a four-booth caravan for under £10,000. Now, when I was up here a couple of days ago looking at the two-booth caravans, I did have a quick look at some of the four-booth vans, and there is quite a large selection here. So I thought, well, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's see if we can make this a little bit more user friendly. So I've decided today we're going to look for a four booth caravan under £10,000 with an MTPLM of under 1400 kilograms. So what does that really mean? Well, it means that this vehicle would be accessible for somebody who's got a restricted driving license. A modern middle of the range car, something like a Passat saloon, would have a gross vehicle weight of around about two tons. So I'm thinking if we look for a caravan under 1400 kilos, you could certainly drive it and tow with it on a restricted license. So that's the aim. I don't know genuinely if we're going to succeed, but let's go and have a look around and see what we can find. Right, well, straight away, I found this one here, which is a 2008 Compass Rally 634. It's a four berth, but its MTPLM is 1,639. So that means this is too heavy. But I thought I would just show this one very quickly. 2008 Caravan is a twin axle. It's a big van and four berth as well. It's heavy, so you'll need a fairly decent car. It's also got uh, two fixed beds at the back there. I don't know if you can see that two single fixed beds at the back here and the front will make up as a double but that is one sizable caravan isn't it for under ten thousand pounds okay so we've got uh 2010 swift coastline 550 four berth mtplm is 1495 okay well that's a fixed bed at the back end washroom and the front makes up as two beds that could be a contender that's quite nice looking, isn't it? Looks tidy as well. Four berth, 2013 Venus, 8995. Ooh. 2013, that's incredible. And the MTPLM is 1,190 kilograms. Right, let's have a closer look at this one. Look at this, terrible. What's happened here to this? It looks like the decal has come adrift and just needs, look at that, what a state that is. Well, if you're interested in buying that caravan, that could be a bargaining chip. And to be honest with you, that is something I think could be easily resolved place to check as well is just here where the roof panel joins the front GRP you can see there's a novel up here and you can see that's full of green mossy gungy stuff so it's really important to clean that out take all of that out if you can I use a paintbrush to keep that clean well I did on our last um, Luna to keep all that clean and make sure that's all nice and bright because that's where water can come in here and that's not just this caravan, that's any caravan that's built with that construction method. Right, let's go on in. Not sure on the interior, I'll be honest with you. It's a bit purpley. Uh, work surface. That reminds me of my old Luna. Okay. Three burner hob. And two fixed beds. Uh, and washroom, toilet on the correct side. Big shower, not fully lined, so you're relying on the the paper and the tape and the sealant here. Okay, we've got a wash basin in the middle of the bathroom at the back, again with the tape as a splashback. Not ideal, but the thing is, this is a Venus. This is an entry level caravan. It's designed for low weight, low entry, cheap, entry level caravan. There's place here for the TV. There's a satellite point, a TV point, and then there's a bracket up there as well. So you could put a TV at the back here. There is also a TV point, satellite hookup point. Um, 
and a 12 volt outlet with the mains outlet here on the side here. So rather infuriating, your TV point is there, which means it's gonna be on the kitchen side next to the sink. It's cheap and it's a four berth caravan and it's super lightweight. But I think we can do better. Let's carry on and go and have a look around. This is a 2011 Luna Quasar 524. It is a four berth caravan and it's under our 1400 kilo target. It's at 1360. That means this is very accessible for quite a wide range of towing cars. This is also a layout I'm very familiar with because this was the layout of our very first caravan. This was the layout of our Luna. Good. That means I can share a bit of experience with you because it's the very much the same front panel. It's the same construction. It's the same everything of our old Luna. So I can share that with you. Let's start at the front and work our way back. I know I always seem to start at the hitch here, but this is quite an important part. It does tell a good story about the caravan. As you can see, a full blown service history there, which is great. The older style Alco friction pad, which is not a problem at all. Really, the only difference is the style of the handle and the front there. This one has also got a pneumatic front tire, which is flat ish that we'll need pumping up. Uh, it does, like all the caravans here today, really do need a good clean. 13 pin electrics. That's a good place to start. Moving on to the grub handles. These have gone a bit grubby. These will need a really good clean. Um, yeah, there's a couple of tips on how to do that or replace them for chrome handles, which you can easily get hold of. Now, like I mentioned before, this all needs cleaning up around here. This gutter goes on top of the join between the two panels here. So this all needs to keep really clean because this is club med for water ingress up here. So all of this needs cleaning and it may need the rail coming off and resealing in here if there is any danger of any water ingress. Now quite handy, there's no caravan next to it, so we can actually stand back and have a good look at it. Let's have a look here. So the thing to look for is, that, is there any reflectors or stickers which are in an odd place? We've got three reflectors along the side of the van there, and that's where I'd expect them to be. What we're looking for is if there's any reflectors in an odd place, that could be hiding some damage but there's not. There is a slight bit of damage to this panel here. In the sun, I can see it. There's two little, little dinks there in the aluminium. But other than that, that looks good. You can see here the construction of the caravan. There's a slight bulge here where the, that's the frame of the caravan. I hope you can see that in the light there. It's quite an extreme light as you can see by the shadow so it means it really stands out quite clearly so that's one there and you can see there's another one towards the back here nothing to worry about there at all this join here by the way is another place to keep nice and clean you can see it's just got a bit of green build up in there that will clean up beautifully for that i used silky and uh, a paintbrush really got in there, really agitated it, and it cleans up beautifully. Lockers always turn yellow. So do the, uh, the flaps there to the water filter and the heater. So don't worry about that. But the stickers, they look fine. Let's go on the back. First thing I want to check here is the awning rail. Make sure that's all good which it does seem to be. There's a bit of condensation here on this window. That's nothing to really worry about. 
We're going to look at that in a minute. That's probably because the caravan's been cold and then it's had sunlight on it today because that sun is quite bright, as I've said. Let's have a look down here. Slight scuff there, but I think that would clean up. This is a GLP panel. I think that would actually clean out. It's like a little scuff, but there's no damage here. We're looking at the awning rail there. Nice and tight, fitting to the van. This is the side which always gets the damage from awning poles to people walking through awnings to uh, branches to whatever. And indeed, I can see some damage here. There is one dent in the skin here and there's a couple more down here. So, oh, and there's a couple more down here as well. Nothing really to worry about. They're there, they're noticeable, but, you know, if you're interested in this caravan, maybe that's a bargaining chip. In fact, there's a few dings down there. I would think that's where the awning's been fitted. There's a few dings just here. That is, I would say, an awning pole has been erected there as an upright. Scratch on a window just here. That will clean out. I know because I've done it. I've got rid of far worse scratches on windows of exactly that make and style. Right, let's head on in. You know, it's incredible. This caravan is the same, but very, very different. So we've just walked in and we are immediately hit with the kitchen on the left hand side and there's a side dinette behind me. I'll show that in a minute. Let's start with the kitchen. So we have a dual fuel hob. So we've got an electric hot plate at the back, three gas burners, separate grill, separate oven, and there is a place down the bottom there to stick pots and pans whilst you're in transit. Next to it, we'll have a cutlery drawer. Beneath it, bits and bobs for cleaning kit, etc., for the kitchen. We've got a Thetford fridge freezer, which will need cleaning. And I would think the, no, that's okay. Above the cooker, we've got a microwave. Storage to the right with a plate rack, cup holder, already in place, solid positive catch. And then something which is different to our old Luna, a vast improvement, is a round sink, no draining board, which means that when you're washing up, you can put your draining board out. I don't know if this one comes with it, to be honest with you. But when you're not washing up, you've got a big space there for a uh, dishing up area, etc. Controller here for the Truma blown air heating. Mains 230 volt outlet, and then we're straight into the living area. Spotlights, exactly the same ones we had in our Luna. Check these, by the way. Check that the switches are positive because ours, after a year, started to break and we needed to replace these switches. So if you're in a Luna of this sort of age, do check the switches on the lights here. Make sure they feel positive. That one does. Uh, lots of storage here. Positive catches. And this one's where we had our radio and it's no different. The so radio goes in there, CD, etc. If you want to do an upgrade, that's a good place to start there. Uh, storage cupboard here. Access to the external radio aerial is in here because it's plugged into the side back there. And finally, good. Now we come over to the wine cupboard, as I called it, the <laughs> wine cupboard. We see we've got some mains testers here as well. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about these cupboards, I'll be honest with you. I think they're a bit of a waste because we never used ours really to how it was designed. We ended up putting a liner in here so we could stack our cups in here quite effectively. But if you're in the mood for it, well, you know, there's a place you can uh, put your glasses and bottles of stuff that you want to keep. Uh -huh. 
So daytime configuration, side dinette, the bunk is tucked away just there. That'll pull out, that flops out, and you mix up into a double, um, double sleeping arrangement there. So a big child can sleep at the bottom, one at the top there. If you are buying one with a bunk bed, make sure that the ladder and all the flaps and the bedding are all in the caravan. So I'm gonna have a look for that in a minute. Okay, so I'm just checking out the storage up here and I've noticed that one of these cupboards here is either damaged or just needs adjusting. But if you can see, they don't line up there. And when I open the cupboard door, it just drops down. So I would ask the dealership to sort that one out there if I was to buy this one. Okay. And this funny little cupboard here, by the way, is where the curtain is uh, tucked away during the daytime, which is all right. Let's go and have a look around in the washroom, shall we? So just like in our caravan, the toilet is essentially on the wrong side because when you're emptying the loo, um, you are emptying it into the awning. However, if you've got a porch awning, that might be past the porch um, and you might be just to a empty that behind the awning. The shower looks really nice, actually. A uh, circular shower there, a beam me up Scotty style. Uh, looks tidy, fully lined, I think. Oh no, there is sealant down the end there. And there is sealant down the bottom there. It does look okay, just looks a bit scrappy. So perhaps, yes, I would say that's been resealed down the bottom there. Okay. You know, of course, if you sit here long enough, you can start to look around and see a couple of things very, which are not to your liking, for example. Things which are broken or things that need attention. Um, apart from the cupboard and the absence of the ladder and the bedding for the bunk, which I hope is in the office, there isn't an awful lot wrong in this caravan. It must be said, the previous owner to this caravan, I think, really looked after it. The evidence is this, the resealing of the shower tray in the bathroom. The fact that all the cushions, all the fabric is in absolute pristine condition here. It's absolutely immaculate. The pneumatic tire is a giveaway that somebody that cares about their caravan. That's someone who wanted to make sure that it rode the, the driveway or the storage yard in a good way. The other evidence is that all the stickers are on the A-frame for a very comprehensive service history of this caravan. So it goes without saying, I would think that the customers here are well known to um, the staff in the office. And I would suspect this was a part exchange for a new caravan. It's a beautiful van. I really like it. Uh, the lights are not LEDs, by the way, are above the light top here. But that's really easy to do. That's really easy to change over. So having a quick look around online, I'm just having a look for cars which are under... Uh, 2,100 kilograms of gross vehicle weight and I've had a look here I've just come across a website there's a Mazda 6 2.2 litre diesel an Audi A4 Avant uh, 2 litre that's bang on the money Octavia Estate 2 litre TDI these are all circa 2017 the newer ones might be completely different but I've just come across a website just given a list of some cars I'll put a link to this page actually in the description below that might be useful for some of you who are on restricted licenses but it does go to show that here we are, we've got a four berth caravan under 1400 kilograms, under 10,000 pounds in really good condition. And it should be really for the price, shouldn't it? And it's a 2011 caravan, so it's not that old. What is that, eight years old? Eight years old. Apart from a ruddy good clean, you need to do nothing to this caravan. Oh, apart from getting that cupboard realigned. So there we go. That's today's choice. Now in the next video, I'm going to look for a large family van, which is, I suppose, a six berth caravan. And we're going to look for a price limit of £15,000. But I just want to say a thing about the price limits here. Um, just because I'm going for bigger vans doesn't automatically mean we need to go up in price. In fact, I could probably go and find a very respectable six berth caravan for £10,000. I could probably find a very respectable two berth caravan for £10,000. It, it really is dealer's choice. Uh, the point is, is that's what's available here today as I'm mooching around. And I've got no preconceptions here of what I might find. But just because I'm looking at bigger vans doesn't automatically mean we need to go up in price range. 
But instead, what I'm hoping to show to you today is that the more you go up in price, the more choice you have. And of course, we've had a look at a Venus, we've had a look at that massive four berth at the top of the storage yard, and we've got this one here, all for under £10,000 in a variety of configurations. So there's more choice at this price level. And I suspect when we go up to £15,000, we're going to find even more choice, which is something I'm really looking forward to having a look at. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It really does help us when you subscribe to our channel. So please do hit the subscribe button, also hit the notification icon, and then you'll be updated when I upload my next video. So until next time, guys, many thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.